Hi everyone, and welcome back to the lab. In this video, I'll be demonstrating that finely divided nickel can be pyrophoric in air. There's a lot of videos out there about iron being pyrophoric in air in its finely divided state, and that's usually done by heating the salt of iron, known as iron oxalate, to form carbon dioxide and very finely divided iron, which when poured from a tube, when still warm, will ignite in air. This has been done many times, but I'm here to show you that nickel could actually do the same thing. So uh, I'm going to do that today using pretty much the same process. I'm going to start by making a soluble nickel salt, and uh, I currently only have this nickel carbonate. It's pottery grade basic nickel carbonate, and you can see the, the formula for it here. It's quite an affair, but uh, if I add hydrochloric acid to it, I'll end up with four nickel chloride in solution along with some carbon dioxide and water. Uh, the nickel chloride can then react with uh, oxalic acid dihydrate, which I will add as a solution to form nickel oxalate dihydrate, which will precipitate from the solution since it's not very soluble in water, and some hydrochloric acid. So some boiling of this will drive the reaction this way, uh, especially since this is not soluble and this will evaporate, and so we'll get a nearly complete conversion to nickel oxalate dihydrate. And then of course the nickel oxalate dihydrate will decompose into finely divided nickel metal, water, and carbon dioxide when heated, and that's the goal. So, we're going to go ahead and do that now. I've set up for the experiment by first placing 45 grams of basic nickel carbonate in the bottom of the speaker. And you can see it takes the form of a free-flowing light green powder. It's very dense. Um, it's not very pure because it's pottery grade, but any impurities that might be in here will probably be of the sodium, potassium, or calcium, or maybe even magnesium variety, which means that the hydrochloric acid is going to serve to purify this anyway, right? because those will be uh, much more soluble than the nickel oxalate. Over here I have the hydrochloric acid will be reacting with it, which is 112 grams of 25% HCl. It's about 25% uh, because I don't I actually know the concentration. I haven't titrated it in a while. Uh, this is 100 milliliters of cold water. We have 100 milliliters of warm water, these approximate values, and uh, 48.6 grams of oxalic acid dihydrate. Now the first thing I'm going to do is uh, add this hot water to the oxalic acid dihydrate and start getting it in solution. So we'll just do that really fast. And it'll take a little while to dissolve. I'll stir it periodically. And then the second thing is uh, I'll add this cold water to the basic nickel carbonate here in this beaker. I'll add a stir bar and we'll just wet this down and this will help moderate the reaction. Get it stirring. It's not going to dissolve but uh, we'll form a nice suspension and it will help us uh, manage the heat of the reaction and allow uh, the hydrochloric acid to react fully. Now that I've got a nice vortex going, I'm going to slowly add the hydrochloric acid. And remember, this is going to produce carbon dioxide gas, so there will be a little foaming. We need to control the addition of the acid to prevent this from foaming over. A little scary, but uh, nothing we can't deal with. And just be careful, make sure you do this in the hood, because we are getting uh, soluble nickel salts misted into the air. And you definitely do not want to be breathing that. And uh, the name of the game here is just to slowly add it until all of the acid is added. It'll take a little while, maybe uh, 10 or 15 minutes. And so I'll uh, go ahead and do that. As the acid addition continues, you can see the solution quickly becomes a dark emerald color, uh, indicative of nickel chloride. The foaming very much ceases. I think we may have added enough acid at this point. Yep, so since we're not getting any more bubbling, I'm going to go ahead and assume that we've added all the acid. I'll let this stir for a few more minutes, and uh, the rest of this acid will just uh, dump out. It was apparently overcompensated for. Um, like I said, I need to titrate my acid. It's a little more concentrated than I had initially thought. Also, some impurities in the nickel, uh, the basic nickel carbonate could throw off the initial measurement. So I've stirred this for approximately 10 minutes, and uh, I'm going to turn stirring off now and allow the impurities that were in the basic nickel carbonate to sort of settle out before I transfer this to the actual reaction vessel. You can see it's uh, very dark but pretty much transparent right now. I'll let all the sand settle to the bottom. It looks almost like uh, green jello, like you might want to drink it, but uh, definitely don't. <laughs> 
Anyway, uh, the oxalic acid solution I've been stirring, you can see some of it's precipitated out just a little bit, so I'm going to pop this in the microwave really quickly just to warm it up and get uh, the oxalic acid back in solution for the next step. And I'm talking about the lab microwave, not your cooking microwave. The oxalic acid is now dissolved, and so we can prepare the main reaction vessel. So we'll start by taking the solution of nickel chloride that we made and transferring it into a bigger beaker to perform the reaction in, and I'm going to pour this slowly uh, in an effort to decant off any of the heavy impurities that may have been in the original basic nickel carbonate. Very carefully. And then I'll tilt it so I can transfer the stir bar. There we go. Ooh, poured off a few grains of sand it looks like, maybe. We have our nice clean reaction mixture now. Start stirring. And now I'll add the hot oxalic acid solution. Oops, it doesn't look like it's quite all dissolved. I'll be right back. That's much better. So I'll add this to the oxalic, or sorry, I'll add the oxalic acid to the nickel chloride solution, and we'll see a precipitate of nickel oxalate uh, dihydrate form. Now the precipitate won't form right away, so we're just going to add this, and then we're going to need to heat and stir for several hours to make sure the reaction goes to completion. You can see there the uh, pretty dramatic change in opacity. I'm gonna up the stirring. Keep everything suspended. Well, I've been heating and stirring for approximately an hour and a half. It's uh, quite warm, not uh, not boiling hot, but pretty warm. Remember, the rate of reaction is increased by about double uh, for every 10 C that you raise a reaction mixture. That's just a general rule of thumb. Doesn't apply to everything, but in general. And you saw how slow the uh, the reaction initially started to happen. And this is true with the formation of a lot of oxalates. So I'm just. Uh, I just stirred this and heated it to make sure that uh, we got the most we could out of this reaction. And of course we can determine how much, uh, how far the reaction went based on uh, the yield that we measure later. But uh, for now, I'm going to call it done. I'll put this watch glass over the top of it, and uh, this can go in the refrigerator in preparation for the filtration step. We want this nice and cold to make sure that we have as much uh, oxalate, the nickel oxalate, out of solution as possible. I've just retrieved the oxalate solution from the refrigerator, and you can see that the uh, heavier oxalate has started to fall out of solution. There's a little bit of water on top, but that'll just go away when I shake it. Anyway, uh, it is now time to vacuum filter. Now I'm going to be using a Buchner funnel for this. This is a, uh, a porcelain funnel with filter paper in it, has the holes in the bottom. You don't want to use a fritted glass filter for this because uh, the frit will be clogged with the... Well, they won't really clog you. You'll still be able to filter it, but... Uh, the oxalate will be very difficult to remove from the frit afterward. Um, the good way to remove it is to use concentrated base solutions, but those attack frits, so um, don't do that. Anyway, uh, I'll just be vacuum filtering with this paper funnel because it's much easier to clean, and uh, the filter paper catches most of it anyway. So uh, unfortunately I have to use this stupid filter aid, which I really hate. It's very hard for some reason, but uh, I'll be using some vacuum grease on that. I can get that going. Just like that. Okay, and then uh, on top of the filter paper, I'm actually going to be using a coffee filter. This isn't necessary, uh, but what I'm using it for is to catch, or I guess to be able to pull out the oxalate from the filter uh, much more easily after the filtration is done, rather than having to scrape it out of the Buchner funnel, where that's kind of a pain. Um, I can just simply pull up the coffee filter and then transfer it right onto the paper towel, like I usually do, to dry things. And the uh, coffee filter isn't going to provide much resistance as far as the vacuum filtration goes. So I'm just wetting it here with some deionized water. This is going to just play it down so I can get it into the position that I want it to be in uh, for the filtration. Let's get this whole thing wet so I can roll the edges over. There we go. A little more and I'll pull the vacuum really fast to uh, suck it down. All right, now to begin filtering, I'm first going to agitate this solution by stirring it to get as much in suspension as possible before I add it to the filter.
very slow vacuum filtration. Oops, no, I just lost vacuum pressure. You can see there, I've got a gauge. So here, I'll press down on the funnel. It's helpful to have that gauge so you know when you're getting a good seal. So I can wiggle it around until, oh, there you go. See, I just made a seal. It's in uh, negative inches of mercury, which is a really stupid measurement in my opinion, but uh, that's fine. Anyway, it'll sort of stick to the flask at about five inches of mercury. Minus five, that is. After struggling with my piece of crap forever filter aid, which just refuses to form a seal, I have now uh, pulled most of the water out of the little oxalate there, dihydrate that is, and uh, I can no longer pull a vacuum on it because now it is sucking air. So that means that there's an air path somewhere through that powder. I think it's probably still pasty, but uh, in fact, it's probably very pasty. But uh, we can go ahead and switch to the standard drying apparatus uh, consisting of a paper towel on the glass pan and go from there. I'm not going to bother running this back through because the, this was a pain in the butt to get in the first place. That looks ridiculously like toothpaste. That's just a, <laughs> the similarity is uncanny. Gather this wet mass up. Drop it there. So there's a bit left on here, which I'll pour on top of this. Be careful. Open this up, and the paper towel will suck the majority of the water out of that paste. This is a particularly terrible vacuum filtration, I have to admit. This is, uh, part of the particulate size is extremely fine, and, uh, yeah, I was not very successful at maintaining a good vacuum. So, all right, I'll have to change out the paper towel a few times in the next couple of minutes, because it's going to saturate through pretty quickly. Yeah, you can see how fine the particulates are. It's going right through the cotton filter. But, uh, anyway, I'll just do that a few times. And uh, this paste of nickel oxalate. It is seriously crazy how much this stuff is almost exactly toothpaste. Don't want to use that on your teeth, though. Something else I noticed about this very much toothpaste like material is that its thixotropy behaves in a non Newtonian way. Uh, when I push on it, it affords quite a bit of resistance, but when I let it go, you can see how it like fractures, but then when I let it go, it sort of melts. It's uh, really weird. It's almost like that GAC stuff, that uh, starch water mix. See that? How it's like a solid and then it just sort of melts. <laughs> it's really, really, really weird stuff. Huh. Uh, we'll let this dry overnight and pretty soon we'll have a nice powder. Well, it's been about 24 hours and this is the product. You can see it's crumbling as I pick up the paper and it's uh, formed a tacky solid. It's still not completely dry, but uh, it's going to be forever to dry like this if uh, I don't increase the surface area, which is easily done by, uh, of course, simply breaking this up and picking these pieces up, increasing their exposure to the air. Now, uh, there's a whole piece right there, but I don't want to touch it when I get it all over everything. But you can see it's a nice big uh, chunk of powder, and of course, the more it dries, the more powder, the crumbly or the more crumbly it'll get, and then uh, it'll eventually be able to be powdered. So I'm just going to break this up, and I'll uh, see if I can get my stir bar out of this. And uh, I'll put this in a separate dish so that I'm going to be able to dry it a little bit faster. A good way to dry things like this is to use a steam bath. You can see here I've got a pot. It's an electric kettle, kind of dirty. It's got some water in it, and uh, the pan gets placed on top. This isn't a fume hood, so the steam can't uh, reach this stuff. And you just turn it on and let it simmer, and uh, as the water simmers, of course, this gets warm, and it's a Pyrex dish, so it's not going to crack, and it'll uh, accelerate the drying of this stuff uh, by a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to speed this up so this doesn't turn into a three-day video. Alright, so it's been a few hours and I've been continuously breaking this up and stirring it and I'm fairly certain that uh, there's no more water to be had out of this because if you bring something like this cold glass jar close to it, you no longer get any condensation on it, which means that uh, there is uh, substantially no more water being driven off and so this is uh, pretty much ready for storage. You can see that the powder here is just a really light teal 
sort of uh, fine powder. These little lumps are very easily crushed. This could easily be ground to a very fine powder, but in the interest of not uh, getting this all into the air, I'd rather leave it sort of chunky. And there we have a, uh, a jar with a considerable amount of uh, nickel oxalate dihydrate in it, uh, ready for future use. Okay, so I have here a test tube, and it's empty, aside from some small stains from earlier uh, tries at this. And I'm going to add some uh, the nickel oxalate dihydrate to the bottom of the tube. Not very much, perhaps a uh, tenth or a fifteenth of a gram or so. Then I'll heat it with a propane torch. And you can see that it's a—it's uh, the teal powder in there, aside from the test tube being dirty, but it will soon become a dark gray mass. I'm going to try and heat the entire length of the tube to eliminate water that may condense in there. And now rapidly puffing up to form nickel metal powder as it loses carbon dioxide. The nickel is now, or the oxalate is now converted completely to nickel. And of course the test of this is to pour this out onto a piece of paper or something and watch it uh, spontaneously combust. There you go, it's even gone as far as uh, burning some holes in the paper towel. And of course, one more demonstration, this time in the lower lighting conditions, and I'll drop it from a little bit higher. The highly reactive form of nickel that is pyrophoric like this is typically used in reduction reactions as uh, rainy nickel. Now rainy nickel is made by the uh, digestion by sodium hydroxide of an alloy of nickel and aluminum. And uh, aside from doing that, I think I may be able to get away with doing some hydrogenations using nickel made by the decomposition of nickel oxalate, so long as it doesn't see air in between the reaction and the uh, decomposition that we just did here. So I'll be doing that in a number, or at least in one upcoming video, and I hope you'll stick around to see that. If you want to see that, please press the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you liked what you saw, uh, please hit the like button as well. And as always, thank you very much for watching.